Hey everyone, today we are going to review Codium, a freemium alternative to GitHub Copilot. We are going to review this tool across five different categories and see how it performs. But first, let me give you a quick overview of the tool. Codium is an AI coding assistant that can help you write code faster. It supports over 70 languages across 40 plus editors, which is massive. If you are a web or mobile app developer, it has got you covered. Codium offers a freemium model with a generous free tier. AI is not cheap, so I like the fact that they offer the free tier forever. Pro tier is $10 per month, which is what GitHub Copilot costs as well. It would be interesting to someday compare the two, but today will just be about Codium. For this review, I have a React TypeScript app set up with Wheat. We will be using Codium as a VS Code extension, which I believe is the primary way it is intended to be used. Let's start our review with the first category, which is code completion. We're going to start writing code in a file and see how quickly and accurately Codium can complete the code for us. Let's start with a React TypeScript component that renders a greeting. In the source folder, I'm going to create a components folder with a new file, greet.tsx. Here, I'm going to start with interface, greet props. Codium provides a suggestion at a pretty good speed. The suggestion is only for the interface though and not the component. I'm going to accept the suggestion by pressing tab. And now it provides the implementation for the greet component. Tab again to accept the suggestion. Codium is showing me another suggestion for a default export. It is not common to export both a named and default export in the React component, so I'm going to ignore this suggestion by pressing the escape key. Let's take a look at another example. This time, let's try a TypeScript utility function to truncate a string to a certain length. I'm going to create a utils folder with a new file, truncate.ts. Here, I'm going to start with export const. Codium is suggesting the truncate function. Tab to accept. And we see the function body. Tab again to accept. Now, Codium is suggesting substring to truncate, but I think slice would be a better method here. And once again, it is suggesting additional completions, which I am not interested in. So I'm going to press escape and save the file. So for code completion, overall, I would say the speed is pretty good, but there is a slight improvement needed, for example, using slice instead of substring. It is also too eager to suggest the next completion, which may not be necessary, but I think that is okay. Personally, I think generating more code with fewer keystrokes, perhaps by relying more on the file name as context would improve the experience. This is relatively simple code, and if the code completion could generate the entire code once without me having to tab multiple times, it would be awesome. Let's move on to code generation. I'm going to create a new context.tsx file in the components folder. This time, I want Codium to generate the code rather than just provide suggestions. For code generation, we press Command-I to trigger the Codium Assistant. I'm going to ask Codium to generate a React, TypeScript, and Tailwind CSS function component for a contact form with fields for name, email, and message. Include the right validations and a submit handler. We see the code generation in action. I am actually surprised at how fast this is. Let's accept the generated code and see what it looks like. The component name is contact form, and it seems to have an on submit prop. I actually like the fact it considered delegating the form submission to the parent component. We then have these state variables for name, email, message, and an errors object. We then have a handle submit function that prevents the default form submission, validates the form, and then calls the onSubmit prop with the form data. 
It also resets the form after submission. For the JSX, we have a form, label, input. I also like the fact that accessibility is taken into consideration with ID and HTML4, and we see the error message also being displayed. I think if the placeholder attribute for the input elements could have been included with an example text of what the value should be, that would have been a really nice touch. But I can't complain. This is really, really good. Now, what about code editing? Let's say we want to use types instead of interfaces. I'm going to select the interface code and press Command I again to trigger the Codium Assistant. Now, the selection seems to have disappeared. So let me try again. Command I and still the same. Let's see if the selection does not matter. So I'm going to select the state variables, Command I change to type alias. I'm going to press command enter. And this is not what I am looking for. So it looks like the code is added to the context of the command assistant. But as a user, that feedback does not exist. Let me select the interface code again, command I and ask it to change to type alias. Okay, this time it seems to work. So I would say code generation is pretty good. About a hundred lines of code. Yeah, more than hundred lines of code and it took about five seconds. Any developer would be happy to have this kind of speed. Code editing, however, although works, I think can use a tiny bit of UX improvement. Let's now move on to code refactoring. I'm going to give us a head start by pasting the code for a user dashboard component. So user dashboard.tsx and paste the code. I'm interested in understanding how well Codium refactors and organizes the code. In this dashboard component, we have three API calls for user data, activities, and to dos and three sections in the JSX to display the data, the user info, recent activities, and the to-do list. State variables have been defined, as well as the interfaces. Now, Codium provides this code lens feature, which is a really nice touch. When you click on the refactor label, it shows us the refactoring options. Let's try out a few from this list. We have add comments and doc strings to the code, add console log statements, clean up this code. Now this seems interesting, so let's try it out. Clean up the code, processing command. There seems to be some change happening. My initial impression is that it has just renamed the variables, the state variables. A little disappointing since it is provided as a predefined option. I was hoping cleanup code would follow best practices and reorganize the code or something, but you know, clean code is how you interpret it, I guess. Let's reject this. Let's try another refactoring option. Refactor, check for bugs, implement the code for the to-do comment. That might be a good one to have. Generate unit tests. Let's try this out. Okay, so we have proposed change test cases and we have about six of them. And we have the code for what seems to be just test cases. Seems to be using fire event. Would user event be better here? I'm not sure, but overall, I'm pretty happy to see so many test cases generated with a button click. It is testing the initial render with the loading state. Rendering of user data with errors, no user data, toggle functionality, and API call failures. I think that's a really good start. It says replacing code lines 22 to 118, I'm guessing. So user dashboard is from 22 to 118. So if I click on this, I don't know if that's replacing any code. And if we click on apply div, Unable to open document file. 
So you copy and paste the code into an appropriate test file. The UI doesn't seem to be working as expected though. I'm not sure if clicking on these line numbers is supposed to do anything. I'm not sure how it's supposed to apply diff when there are no tests to begin with. So a little improvement from a UX point of view is required. By the way, this right-hand panel is called Codium Chat. All right, let's try one more. So refactor, make this code strongly typed. No, we don't want that. Make this faster and more efficient. Very interesting. Fetch data, fetch activities, fetch to-dos. I don't think this is any faster and the error block also has been removed. I don't think that's how it is supposed to work. I was expecting faster and more efficient to sort of improve the performance for the component. Oh, there you go. This time, there is a fetch data function, and the API calls have been refactored to use promise.all to fetch all the data concurrently, which is a good suggestion. The error handling code still seems to have been removed, though. A good suggestion, but missing error handling. Let's finally try a custom instruction. So refactor, and I'm going to provide the instruction refactor to smaller components using best practices. Okay, so we have interface user activity to do. There is a user information component, which displays just the user info data. Recent activities component for just the recent activities and a to-do list component. The JSX now invokes the three individual components. Okay, this is pretty good. We have individual components and the component names are also pretty good. Overall, I think the refactor options are kind of a hit or miss, but the custom instruction you provide works really well. As they say, you get what you prompt. All right, let's move on to code debugging. How well Codium can identify and fix bugs in code. Once again, to save us time, I have created three new files. LastElement.ts, which is a function that returns the last element of an array in the utils folder. Sort.ts in the utils folder with a sort descending function to sort an array in descending order. And a user profile component which fetches a user's data from an API and displays it. Now to debug, we can use Codium's chat feature. The shortcut is command shift A. Let's start with last element.ts. Here, array.length should be array.length minus one, since array index starts from zero. Let's see what Codium says. In the chat window, we can see last element.ts is currently being tracked. I'm going to ask, are there any bugs in this code? Press enter. And we see, yes, there is a bug in this code. A quick glance, we can see it says array.length minus one, not array.length. We see the corrected code. If I click insert, it adds a new block, but does not update the existing code. So you will have to insert and then delete your previous code from what it looks like. Would have been really nice if it could modify the existing code in place. All right, let's now try sort.ts. The function name is sort descending, but if you take a closer look, the function is sorting in ascending order. I'm going to ask Codium to fix the code but let's use this context feature in the chat. So with last element.ts in focus, I'm going to type at sort.ts to provide context and say, are there any bugs in this code? Nothing seems to happen. So I'm going to try one more time at sort.ts. It has started working. So yes, there is a bug in the code. Function is supposed to sort the array in descending order, but the comparison function actually sorts the array in ascending order. If I click on insert, it's still insert in 
our current last element.ts file. So I guess we do need the focus to be in sar.insert and then delete. I'll leave our faulty code in place for now. Code debugging so far, two out of two. Finally, let's try the user profile component. The main issue here is missing the user ID dependency. I'm going to ask Codium if there is any issue with this code. With sort.ts in place, I'm going to start a new conversation and say add user profile dot tsx. Is there any issue in this code? So it says there doesn't seem to be any obvious issue. Handling, type checking, API endpoint. Overall, the code looks fine. But we do need to fetch the new user when the user ID changes. Is there any issue with the use effect hook? Now it's able to identify that it is missing a dependency array for user ID. I wonder what happens when I click on insert. So it seems to insert the code with dots and the comment as is. I think in our case, it is simple to just include user ID. But if it is a longer function and there are multiple places it is suggesting us to change, I think copy or insert just wouldn't work. So again, I think it goes back to if Codium could modify the code in place, it would be just a huge boost to how this feature works. So overall, I would say Codium does a really good job with debugging, but how we can apply the suggested fixes needs some improvement, just from a developer experience point of view. All right, let's move on to our final category, code explanation. We're going to ask Codium to explain the code we have seen so far in this video. You can make use of the explain label on the Codium lens. Let's start with user dashboard. I'm going to click explain. And we see the explanation in the chat interface. It's a React function component called user dashboard. It fetches user data, recent activities, and a to-do list from three different APIs. Uses use state to manage state. Use effect to fetch the data. It renders a dashboard UI, loading message. If there is an error, there is an error message. The to-do list allows users to toggle the completion status and overall the component provides a user-facing dashboard that displays relevant information and allows users to interact with the to-do list. Pretty solid summary. Let's try out the truncate function. So truncate.ts, explain, takes a string and number n as input, returns the string truncated to n characters, appending an ellipsis if the string is longer than n. The nullish coalescing operator prevents a null pointer exception if string is null or undefined. Solid once again. Let's try out sort.ts. So explain. Function named sort descending takes an array and returns the same array sorted in ascending order, not descending despite the function name. Now this is really good. I love the fact that it has called out the function name and the function logic being different saying the function is misleading as it actually sorts in ascending, more accurate name would be sort ascending. So three out of three for code explanation. Codium does a very good job with explaining code. It is particularly helpful when you're working with unfamiliar code. So final thoughts, Codium is a really good tool. It has a lot of features and the free tier is really generous. I think the code generation is the standout feature but there are minor UX improvements that can make the product more enjoyable. I would highly recommend it to anyone, especially if you're a developer who is still not using AI to write code. I am looking forward to reviewing more AI products, free and paid ones in the coming weeks. Let me know in the comment section what you think about Codium or if you have any suggestions for what I should review next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.